<laughs> yes, they're they're constantly going at each other. And that brings us to chapter 20, which is a challenge. And Volk is even more determined after Zaxus's comments to be able to beat him. And Luther sees this. And again, Luther quote, and I always love Luther quotes. He he says, greatness is forged in the flames of adversity. I can see the blaze in your eyes now. And it's always been there, but the light burns with an intensity I have yet to experience from you. Very, very intense. Volk wants to bring home the bacon. He's he's ready for it. He is motivated. He is ready. He's got his book. He's prepared. He's putting in the work. They also find out that Deason is in town, but Adelgis is essentially not going to go see him for a few days because he knows he's busy and he doesn't want to bother him. And it just kind of another glimpse into the relationship and the no love between the two. Volk is training and again is getting some water and has this very awkward moment with the attendants. And then you can really tell that he's struggling to embrace being a class above as an arcanist. Well, shoot. I mean, the attendant was about to like wet himself because Volk decided to grab the pitcher of water and just chug it like a barbarian than to use a glass. And yeah, I get it. He's thirsty. I ain't blaming the guy, but Again, like you see that these, and this is at the hotel. This isn't at the the castle. So you can see that these mortals are like god awful afraid of these arcanists. And it's not a just trying to put their best foot forward and, you know, bring honor to whoever. They seem like they have literally been beaten because of this. And based on the other guilds making comments and blaming the waiter at the palace for tripping and falling and colliding with Volk, you can tell that almost anything bad that happens, the guilds are just going to almost blame it on them. So they are constantly on the lookout trying to avoid something because even if it's not their fault, they're going to be the ones that have to deal with the repercussions from it. I mean, shoot, the waiter from the castle that bumped into Volk, Volk offered to pay for it and he's, oh, no, no, I'll pay for it. It was my mistake. I, I messed up. Like, that's not normal. No, and it's it's very different because in some of the earlier books, we saw that they were, you know, getting free passage on a ship, which you think, okay, ship might not be at full capacity. They could probably handle that. So it's not a ton of gold loss, but it's, it seems to have escalated to another level in, in Thronehold. I mean, on the Isle of Landon, they respected the Arcanists. They bowed, they they showed their respect. Like you said, they, they offered free passage, free cart ride, but they weren't walking on eggshells around them. And I think this is kind of showing how, I guess, the northern northern parts of this world don't you know fear them because especially because like, I imagine living in a city like Thronehold, the aristocrats are going to be aristocrats. And yeah, and it's, it's a whole lot different on some of the other cases. You know, you think the Isle of Ruma, they have... Every 10 years, they have a couple of Arcanists. You know, they're not frequently interacting with them or dealing with them on a day-to-day. So it's very different when your job is dependent on them not getting upset at you, essentially. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, shoot, even the Isle of Ruma, they they may see an Arcanist every here and there with a a ship or a boat that's passing through, but that's probably the extent of it. I imagine they don't call for Arcanus very often because it's such a long trip to get there for them. Yeah. So it's... All right, moving on. <laughs> we digress. Yes. <laughs> so Volk is training with Zelfri and Zelfri is helping him to understand essentially that Volk needs to one, know what his strengths are, but two, also use any information that he can get from an enemy to their disadvantage. Uh, and he also kind of chides Volk Sing with what Luther had said. You need to know your strength because you're right now afraid to use any strength at all. And that's going to result in you getting killed. As they're going through this training session, we get a Reaper Arcanist that shows up and he just wants to fight Zelfry. I feel like he could have just been like, all right, on the count of three, just whip it out. All right. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. <laughs> And Zelfri does not want to partake in this. He only wants to train his apprentices. And we learn that the Reaper has chains along with his scythe and actually has the names of the people that he's killed or busted in battle. And the Reaper really, really wants Zelfri's name on the chain. 
Velfry keeps pushing back. So the Reaper pushes and says, you know, his apprentices are better than Zelfri's. He had two apprentices that we met earlier in the throne hold, but he also has two other ones, which he feels will be a bigger challenge and be able to best any of Zelfri's apprentices. And then Zelfri's low key, like, well, I know these two apprentices, they've barely been on any hunts. They've, they've been on offensive positions and stuff like that. So like just rattles off all this information. Like he's reading it from a stats card on the back of the baseball card. Yeah. He did his research (laughs) and we don't, we don't know why, but he's, he's out there obviously researching the other guilds, everyone else in the tournament. So he's very well informed to Volk's dismay. He actually won't give Volk any of this information. He wants Volk to learn to do the research on his own and to prepare for a battle on his own because Zelfrey won't always be there to help him out. I like this because it had been so easy for Zelfrey to be like, screw that. I know I want you to win for sure. Now I'm going to give you all the, the, the tricks and secrets, but he, he lets him try to figure it out on his own. And as much as Volk struggles, sometimes I think that's just how Volk learns and retains so much and so well. So yeah, it definitely hits close to home for it. And that wraps up chapter 20. Shoot. And we're almost to the tourney. Yes. And before we wrap everything up, we also want to, again, remind everybody to keep an eye out on a solid release date for the time marked Warlock, as this is going to be coming out sometime in April. And again, this is Shammy's new urban fantasy book. So keep an eye on Amazon for them. That's available. And we, like always, we'd like to thank Dan Mackison, our editor, And you can find us on Podbean, Google Podcasts, which actually will be transitioning to YouTube Music. So if you haven't switched everything over to there yet, you might want to get get doing that soon if you listen to Google Podcasts. Uh, We're also on Apple Podcasts. and We have our Facebook Facebook group. And we are on YouTube. So if you want to see us as we're talking, and Dan does a great job at putting in images from the awesome source Frith Chronicles fandom wiki. Uh, he he does a great job getting that pushed over to us as well. And if you want to get a hold of us, we can get us at frithguildpod at gmail.com or send a message to us on Facebook or comment on the page. You're also on Discord. Scott, are you on Discord yourself? I am. For the Capital Station Lounge? Capital Station Lounge, yep. So, Scott, do you have anything else to add today? Get ready for the tournament. <laughs> Coming. Right. Thank you for listening and stay tuned.